Hey, surgeon. Hi. Hi. So you know that you're a sex icon for the French public <laughs> who already knows you. I'm very glad to hear it. <laughs> I hope I'll get laid a lot if I come over there. Okay. <laughs> you already get laid. You, uh, <laughs> you're but the, there's always room for more. You're the post-apocalyptic cowgirl for the French Paris Parisian audience. Yeah, we've created the genre, eh? <laughs> exactly. This is what happens in our dusty little Pueblo. This is what happens in the desert. Really, no, it really is. So can you tell me what is a post-apocalyptic cowgirl? Um, I think it's a vision of the way that life will be after the revolution when queers rule the world. And, Way. <laughs> and we have kinky sex all the time. Okay. Which is what we do all the time if we didn't have to pay rent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After the revolution. This is our vision of the revolution. <laughs> After exactly. Hi, I'm Billy Ripper here at the first yeah, edition for Apocalyptic Cowgirls, the sequel. And we're here in the Sonora Desert at some land that friends of ours own with these two beautiful houses they built by hand. Can you explain exactly where we are? We are um, in the mountains outside of Bisbee, yes. Arizona. And, yeah, I um, can. I'm just like gonna empty out this water. Now, so it's been a little colder today shooting than it will be tomorrow. And what do you like in the fact of um, acting uh, with Maria Betty? Um, Maria is an incredible director, and she gives us this amazing amount of personal freedom to do the things that we want to do and the things that we actually find erotic. And, um, and it's a wonderful. It's a wonderful opportunity to have a lot of input into the script and, and to do things like that. And um, You can get involved yourself in it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I don't do a lot of porn, you know, I mean, especially at this point in my life. Um, and I really believe that what she's doing is is amazing and, you know, not only like these really beautiful visions of um, the kind of sex that isn't really being done on camera all that often, but um, but she's also just a really visionary filmmaker, so it's nice to, to be a part of that and, and jump into her world a little bit. So, Billy, how do you feel? Good. A little tired, um, but excited. Okay, you're the top of the movie, or how d would you define yourself? Uh, I'm a switch. Yeah, it's right... Uh... You're the switch. Uh huh. And what is a switch? A switch okay. is someone that is both the top and the bottom. Right okay. To the, to the power dial. Versatile. Yes, we love that. Mm-hmm. We do. <laughs> Did you prepare all of your cocks? I'm ready. <laughs> And how would you define yourself? As a switch also, or mainly as a big, big top, very dominatrix? <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, I, I would say that I am the top of the film, um, but there's a little plot twist, you know? There's some moments where I'm not always on top. And, um, and I like that because I think, for, at least for me, it's more true to life. I like being, um, you know, in my own personal life, I'm not a top 100% of the time. So it's, I think it's, it's a good portrayal of the way that those dynamics and BDSM relationships really work. Um, and, you know, though I am more of the top in the film, I think I'm, you know, it depends. I think we'll see how it all goes, but my, t my character tends to, to kind of go with the flow as well and, and be, you know, pretty sensual, so. Okay, but I mean, is your character can show some vulnerability? somehow mm -hmm. or it's uh, I, I see herself like the godmother really strong mm -hmm. yeah I think she's kind of the desert dom the you know madam top of this whole thing but uh but I think she does show some vulnerability and the and the character is um is subject to the whims of everyone around her as well so Billy how is your ass it's uh, perfectly bruised <laughs> not too much Okay. I'll save a little for tomorrow. <laughs> so, do you feel like a virgin? Never. <laughs> Not even when I 
was a virgin. <laughs> really? It's an insult for you being a virgin? Um, I don't feel like a virgin. I mean, I feel good. Yeah, I mean, not a little bit like you're a little scared by the excitation? You know, not really. Um, I mean, I feel like everyone is very low-key. Yeah. And we've had pretty much total creative license over this project, um, which makes me feel really comfortable because pretty much everything that I'm doing I want to do. Okay. I'm happy to do it. Um, and I'm really close with you and our friend in there. My name is Neil. This is uh, my place in Tucson, Arizona. I'm a sculptor, I'm a photographer, uh, sometimes filmmaker, total goof off. Okay, and can you explain, and, by, and you take your time by explaining where we are today to shoot the second post-apocalyptic cowgirl? We are here at the uh, Aircraft Restoration and Maintenance in Tucson, Arizona. This is a, a company that uh, salvages airplanes, uh, puts them back in the air sometimes, uh, takes them apart, uh, sends them off to different corners of the world. Uh, this is my studio in the midst of that place. I've been here about four years. Uh, back and forth, uh, do a lot of traveling in the summer. Uh, I'm here in the winter where I work. Okay, and can you explain to us the particularity of this place because it's a cemetery for planes? Yes, this is, this is not the airplane quote-unquote boneyard that people often talk of. That's a military installation on the other side of Davis Mountain Air Force Base, which is right here. This is a private uh, airplane salvage company okay. that, that's been here for 50 years, since, since the end of the Second World War. So this is a kind of attics with old props from the, the war, or...? No, oh, this is just miscellaneous uh, industrial aviation salvage, uh, possibly to make pieces out of like the lamp I made over here or the tables, or this is just pieces I gather from the junkyard when I walk by and I like them and they tell me I can have them. Okay. And I just keep them here until they become something later. So this is objects that has a third life, we can say. Absolutely, absolutely. Sorry, it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> it's fine, I like mess. And in the center, can we... Can you yeah, go in yeah, the no, center? This is, this is just a bunch of stuff I use for photo pops. Various things, a lot of militaria with a sprinkling of other sort of weird things, you know, a little Santa Claus, a little Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Always makes for odd. If, I, I find if I put childish things with military industrial things, it makes people chuckle. Okay. Uh, and they never know exactly why. It makes them uncomfortable and then they chuckle instead. I think that's what happens. 